If you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We've gone ahead and drawn a picture to represent the information given in the question. We've labeled the distance from where the person is flying the kite to the point underneath the kite as x. The height of the kite is represented by y and has a value of 100 feet. And then the length of the string is z, which has a length of 200 feet. The angle between the kite string and the horizontal is represented here by theta. And we recall that the cotangent of an angle is equal to the adjacent side over the opposite. And if we look carefully at our picture, the adjacent side would be x, and the side that is opposite to the angle is y. Now, notice that the kite is moving horizontally, so it's only moving in this direction, and that actually means that it's neither rising nor falling. And therefore, this distance y isn't changing. It's a very important part of this question that y isn't changing because the kite is moving horizontally. So we're just going to come in here, and for y, we can confidently fill in 100 feet because, again, that distance isn't changing. Now that we have our equation, we're going to differentiate it with respect to time. And we know to do that because the question is asking us for a rate. And anytime a calculus question asks you for rate, you want to differentiate with respect to time. Now the derivative of cotangent of theta is negative cosecant squared of theta. But the chain rule demands that we multiply by the derivative of our variable. And in these problems, we're doing the derivative with respect to time. So this would become d theta dt. On the other side, the derivative is a little more straightforward. Notice that x over 100 might be more conveniently written as 1 100th x. So you basically have a constant in front of x. And so the derivative of 1 100th x would just be that constant that's in front of x. So it would be 1 100th. But chain rule demands that we multiply by the derivative of our variable with respect to time. So we would have dx dt. Now, it does turn out that we are trying to solve for d theta dt. If we go back to the question, it says, at what rate is the angle between the string and the horizontal decreasing? So because it's asking for the rate of the angle, then we know that we're solving for d theta dt. So why don't we, in order to solve for that, divide both sides by the negative cosecant squared of theta. like that. These will cancel out. And so now we have d theta dt is equal to this monstrosity here, 1 over 100 times dx dt over negative cosecant squared of theta. Now we just have to fill in the known values and we will have our answer dx dt. Let's go back to the picture. dx dt would be the rate at which x is changing. And we were told that the rate at which x was changing was eight feet per second. Remember, that's how fast the kite was moving horizontally, and so that's how fast x is changing. It's increasing at eight feet per second. So we have one one hundredth multiplied by eight divided by the negative cosecant squared of theta. So when you have cosecant squared of theta, you can actually put the squared here. And then what goes inside is the cosecant of theta. We remember that the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. So in other words, instead of being opposite over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over opposite. We just go back to our diagram and the hypotenuse was 200 and the opposite was 100. So we can just fill in 200 over 100. And then we just simplify this down. We're going to have on top 8 one hundredths over negative 200 divided by 100, of course, is 2, and 2 squared is 4. And so when we crunch this down, perhaps on our calculator, we would get negative 0.02. As far as the unit is concerned, Theta is an angle, so it would be measured in radians. And then time in this problem was measured in seconds. So we would have 
radians per second as our unit.